Let's move on to 2019, which began with another John Wick film, the story of an ex-hitman who went to take revenge on robbers who killed his dog. In the process, he turns into an entertaining weapon of mass destruction. As the actor declares, the inspiration for filming the third movie came to him in a dream. Yes, yes, I had a vision after chapter two that I saw John Wick in a suit walking in the desert. And I shared that with the director Chad Stahelski, and he went, that's a good idea. Some projects in Hollywood wait for the green light for decades. But Keanu's dream convinced Lionsgate to allocate $75 million for filming the third part of John Wick in just a minute. I've never been to the Sahara, but to go there, what a magical, amazing, profound place. The script was entrusted to the irreplaceable author, Derek Kolstad, who created a fantastic world of killers, hotels, and gold coins. Derek did not limit himself to the scene in the desert and expanded the number of locations to an unprecedented scale. Wick seems to have made it his goal to whack someone in every corner of the world in this installment. Reeves spent more than four months preparing and rehearsing kicks, jumps, falls, and shots, as well as chases on motorcycles and horses. Chad Stileski has been working with Keanu since the first Matrix, so he's always looking for new challenges for the actor. And that was uh, next level. But Holly Berry, who played Sophia, a cold-blooded hitman, John's friend, and avid dog lover, noted that she never trained so much for a role. During the course, the actress even broke three ribs. I broke three ribs. What? I film when I was rehearsing for John Wick. Chad hates when I bring this up. I, I thought I was going to get recast in that very moment. I thought, fuck. No. I'm out of the movie. They're going to replace me because, you know, the show has to go on. But to Chad's credit, he, he waited for me. The experience of using a weapon and interacting with four-legged actors was also new for Holly. She started training courses half a year before the filming began. Dog trainer Andrew Simpson, who previously taught dire wolves for Game of Thrones, helped her tame the beasts. According to the plot, Sophia definitely manages two Belgian Melanoise. Yes, yes, I was also sure that they were German Shepherds, but no. This is a separate breed usually used for police service. We see only two dogs in the frame, but on the set, they had to deal with five Melanois at once. While Holly Berry was cuddling with the doggies, Jerome Flynn prepared his groin area for them. Yeah, that's gonna be a new experience for me. Fortunately, Malinois are very trainable and chose not to method act in this scene. Fantastic. And John's new dog became the crew's favorite pet on the set. Maybe because his brutal attack looked like this. Is that the dog? He likes you. Oh, me? I'm more of a cat person myself. Mark Dacascos played a cat person, a skilled cook, and deadly hitman zero. His character deceives expectation by turning bloody battles into funny sketches. Mark learned about his part's significance only a few days before the shooting began, so he built the image on personal traits. For example, the fact that Zero is fanatical about John directly refers to Mark's confession that he is fascinated by Reeves' talent. I gotta tell you, I'm a huge fan. John Wick. Keanu replied that Mark's professionalism and incomparable combat skills pushed him to work even harder in the battle scenes. The result of mutual respect is most clearly visible in the fight in the glass room. Keanu and Mark filmed in it for more than a month. The construction of such an extravagant location cost $4 million. Chad Stileski designed this scene without CGI. This forced cinematographers and stunt directors to think through every shot and every camera angle in detail, which added complexity to the already incredibly tangled fight choreography. The sheer number of professionally rehearsed and recreated fights in the film is also impressive. In the first episode, Keanu beats Boban Mojanovic so hard that I think Anthony Davis feels avenged. The scene is fascinating, 
but it turns out to be only a prologue to the episode in the weapons workshop. Fleeing from the pursuit, John stumbles upon a showcase of old revolvers from the 19th century, and assembles the one and only. This scene references the movie The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where Eli Wallach's character assembles a revolver to his taste from many others. The scene is also notable for the elaborate choreography and the impressive number of various weapons, which, piece by piece, move from the store shelves to the bodies of the pagans with whom John fights. Connoisseurs will not be indifferent to the variety of objects flying back. These episodes are mesmerizing, and can be used as a substitute for adrenaline during reanimation. Still, someone threw a fly in the ointment, where ointment stands for the first class action and fly stands for the 90s B-movie vibe. Maybe it's an homage to Arnie and Sylvester's golden era, but John and Sophia's enemies in the Casablanca scene help to kill themselves. There is a saying, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. So the bad guys miss the point of that saying and rush at the shooters with their bare hands. The bad guys must have missed the memo on that one. Some guys appear as if straight out of a video game, biding their time on a loop in their idle animations. These Street Fighter-esque villains are desperately waiting for their turn of demise, and with Sophia at his side, John enters the scene like a rock star racking up his number of victims with flair and finesse. By the way, during the duration of the film, John single-handedly killed 90 people, but considering their lack of equipment and zero motivation for life, there could have been more. Yeah. The epic self-slaughter in Casablanca goes into the delirium through which the third film exists. The scene is in the Sahara Desert. Here, John Wick is so cool that it seems he tries to fist fight the heat, but the main character loses his will to live in the next few minutes. However, John's motivation in the two previous films was to survive to preserve the memories of his wife. Foolishness was hinted at even during the promotional tour of this picture. Say, even tonight, you are more suitably dressed for walking through the Sahara. Because, like, lace-up shoes aren't a good idea for no, a sad dude. I know, but it's John Wick. <laughs> but it's John Wick. An argument with which Keanu knocks out questions about logic. And judging by the fact that the third part exceeds the previous one's success, the audience is satisfied with it. Oh, oh, oh. oh John fucking Wick. The film was released on the big screens on May 2019 and received mixed reviews, dividing critics. Some admired John's berserker walks through enemies, others were indignant, but to each his own. I hope that the sequel, which is expected in 2023, will not make the viewer ask too many questions about what will captivate and immerse us in the adrenaline-fueled adventures of John Wick. You ready, John? Yeah. Hey, do you like our work? Let us know with your like and comment, push that subscribe button, and share with your friends. If you want to support the project financially, become our sponsor on Patreon or YouTube sponsorship. Thank you. Let's move on. <laughs>